Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. It's time once again for your weekly wrap up. And let's face it, over the last couple of years, PCs have kind of been stagnant, especially laptops when it comes to big generational performance increases. But we're starting to see some really interesting things happening from all of the major players out there who make computer processors. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that today in this week's wrap up, so let's get to it. So if you're looking to buy a PC in the next year or so, you're going to have a lot of choices. Both Intel and AMD have really upped the game on the performance of their processors, especially when it comes to graphics. And then you've got Apple and Qualcomm who are developing processors that are running with ARM chips, basically the same chips you might find in your iPad or a phone. But they're able now, because they're so powerful, to run PC operating systems like Mac OS or Windows 10. And as a result, we as consumers win out because we've got a lot of different things to choose from, which might add some confusion, but I do think will add some real value to the marketplace. Now, I want to start with the AMD Ryzen chips because I think AMD deserves a lot of credit for moving the industry forward. Uh, we started looking at their APUs, which are basically CPUs with a really nice graphical engine built in, uh, back about two or three years ago, and I was very impressed with what we were seeing graphically out of their processors without the need for a separate GPU. So while really upping the graphical performance of their desktop processors, AMD then went out and started making some mobile versions of their chips, which also performed remarkably well for their price point. And one laptop we looked at last year was from Acer, the Aspire 5. Uh, this laptop is very inexpensive. It costs less than $500 most of the time. And it performs as well as some laptops that might cost three or four times as much. Uh, this is GTA 5 running on that laptop from our review. Uh, this is low settings 1080p, but we're getting a playable 30 frames per second. And at the time I was looking at this laptop, we were not finding many Intel machines that could do this. Uh, here is the same game running at 720p, and as you can see here, we're getting uh, even better frame rates, and that's just remarkable out of something so affordable. It was also able to run the Dolphin GameCube emulator pretty much at full speed uh, for most of the games that we tested, and that really blew me away, especially, again, given how affordable this machine was versus the Intel equivalents. Uh, so here you can see that machine uh, against the ThinkPad X1 Carbon that was available around the same time with an 8th generation Intel processor. It was pretty much doing just as well as that one, if not a little better, uh, graphically versus the Intel graphics that were on those 8th gen chips at the time. And that was something I think that was really uh, enlightening to me about where AMD had focused their design efforts on, and I think it's also waking up Intel as well. Now, AMD made another revision. They have now the 4000 series chips, and the best value I've seen so far is this machine from Lenovo, the Flex 5. Uh, this came with 16 gigs of RAM and a pen, 1080p display, uh, really good price, a little bit more than that Acer uh, cost, but still uh, very affordable for what it could deliver. And as you can see, they really upped the graphical, graphical game even over their prior editions. So it's pretty much double the graphical performance on that uh, 3D Mark CloudGate benchmark versus the 3200U processor on the prior generation. And that eclipses what we saw out of the Intel chips that were available on laptops just a year or two ago pretty remarkable. And as a result of these big gains from these AMD processors, we've been seeing manufacturers offering customers the option of an Intel or AMD laptop. Uh, this is one example of a laptop we reviewed a few months ago from Lenovo. They had both an Intel and an AMD version of their ThinkPad T14S. And of course, the AMD one was much more powerful, especially when it came to graphics. The one thing the Intel one had going for it was that it had a Thunderbolt port on it, which would give you some additional connectivity options. But by and large, the AMD really left it in the dust. And it's not just for games either. Uh, if you're doing any kind of light video editing on one of these laptops or doing photo editing, anything that might hit a GPU is going to see better performance on these AMD Ryzen machines versus something just running with the standard Intel graphics. Now, of course, with AMD making some gains in the market, Intel needed to respond and deliver a better product. And they started doing that last year with their 10th generation core chips and their improved Iris Plus graphics. And we saw uh, some real improvements on their i7-1065G7 chip 
That's been in a lot of different computers we've looked at over the last couple of months, including most recently the Acer Spin 5. And if we take a look at this 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark result, you can see that it gets close to, but not quite exceeding what we were getting out of the Ryzen chips. Again, AMD still had a bit of an edge here, but Intel definitely was able to catch up. Uh, one thing to note, though, is that the computers with those uh, i7 chips with the Iris Plus graphics tend to cost more than the AMD equivalents do, depending on the brand and which one you're picking. Uh, but nonetheless, Intel was able to come out with a part that had onboard graphics that could perform close to uh, where their major competitor was. But again, AMD still had the edge. And then last week, we took a look at the new uh, Dell XPS 13 that has a Tiger Lake processor built in. This is the 11th generation Intel mobile chipset, and they dramatically improved the graphics performance on that processor. Check it out. We got a score of 1,732 on that TimeSpy benchmark, and that is now surpassing what we saw out of the AMD Ryzen chips. And this, my friends, is exactly why having competition in the marketplace is a good thing. AMD is not going to let this lie here for too long, and I'm sure we're going to see something out of their next generation of processors that will try to exceed or match what Intel is doing. And we've gone for many years here of not having laptops with great onboard graphics performance to suddenly having a lot of great options for onboard graphics performance. And what's really cool about this Tiger Lake chipset is that it looks as though it is performing close to what we've seen out of a GTX 1050 GPU from NVIDIA. So as you can see on the chart here, the performance we got out of Tiger Lake was very close to that of the GTX 1050 in the Dell Enspiron 7000 that we looked at probably about two years ago now. And the Tiger Lake also, of course, does better than some of the smaller mobile GPUs we see from time to time on similar laptops. Now, a discrete GPU still is probably ideal in many circumstances because those discrete GPUs have their own memory separate from the system RAM. But nonetheless, this is really exciting to see because we're going to be hitting an era where uh, more often than not, you will have a decently performing laptop in smaller and smaller form factors. Now, one thing, though, you have to be careful about when buying a Tiger Lake machine is that it needs to be equipped with the Iris graphics. There will still be Tiger Lake chips without this graphics chipset, so you're going to want to be on the lookout for that. Definitely make sure your chip has G7 on the end of it. Uh, we did see a few versions of the new XPS 13 that have Tiger Lake, but not this graphics chipset. And of course, you'll be paying a little bit more for the privilege of Iris graphics. And of course, it looks like the market is responding to a more competitive product from Intel. According to Laptop Magazine here, Intel is predicting a record year despite all the economic difficulties because of this new chipset. And clearly, PC manufacturers have been dying for more dramatic generational performance increases, and it looks like we're finally getting that. Uh, so I'm sure we'll be getting many more Tiger Lake-based machines in to take a look at in the near future. But of course, I still think the AMD Ryzen's will be competitive both in performance but pricing as well. Uh, don't be surprised to see a lot of budget laptops running with these Ryzen 4000 series processors that will be a little below the Tiger Lake performance, but still very, very good for their price points. And again, this is all good for us consumers. Now, typically, of course, the battle for PC dominance has been between Intel and AMD, but there's new players in the field now, uh, namely the A14 from Apple. Apple made a very bold decision to move the entire Mac product line away from the Intel architecture and over to their own custom silicon. And these are the same chips they make for their iPhones and iPads. And undoubtedly, they'll be tuned a little differently on the Mac version for uh, greater performance. But this is a big deal because this is the first PC manufacturer that's willing to completely abandon the Intel architecture we've been running with for decades to something totally new and different. And I think the big deal with this new Apple architecture is that it will be able to do probably 95% of what most people do on their Mac better than an Intel or AMD chip with far less power required to do it. And Apple's able to design the hardware around those specific use cases. And they were showing off some stuff a few months ago about how well the A14 could edit 4K video, for example, and drop in all these cool filters in real time. 
uh, doing the sorts of things you would normally need a much more powerful Mac to do. But I'm sure there would be things that you could throw at this processor that it would not be able to do as well as Intel. Because again, I think Apple is focusing on the specific use cases. But still, this is going to be a big deal for consumers because if people do nothing but edit video, edit photos, and go on Facebook all day long on their computer, this is going to be all they need. And they're going to see much better battery life and super fast performance out of that new Mac. And I'm really excited to see what comes out of this because I think it's going to start nudging the industry in a new direction. Uh, now, for some hints as to what we can expect here, uh, here's a great example of a benchmark test that really takes advantage of the Apple hardware. This is the new 3D Mark Wildlife benchmark test. And this is a really neat test because it is multi platform and it kind of simulates playing a game, of course. And as you can see here, my original iPad Pro 11 from two years ago, it has the A12X is almost equal in performance to the XPS 13 with that new Tiger Lake chipset. And it bests the prior generation of the Iris graphics on that Acer Spin 5. And this is out of something that weighs about a pound, has no fan on board, and is able to deliver graphics performance like you see here. But I can guarantee you there are probably several hundred other things that that Dell can do better than the iPad. But for what most people are going to do, Apple Silicon might be enough. And that is really going to drive the market in a new direction. So keep an eye on what Qualcomm is doing with their new 8CX processor. Uh, this is another ARM-based chip, a Snapdragon. And this has been running on a few select Windows 10 devices, including one from Microsoft. I believe it's called the Surface X. I also got in one recently from Lenovo that I've been evaluating as well, also running ARM. But the problem on the Windows side is that no one's going all in on ARM, right? So the developers have to support both platforms. Microsoft does make it relatively easy to port your apps back and forth, but I haven't seen the kind of commitment to ARM yet on the Windows side like we're about to see on the Mac. But my prediction here is that if Apple Silicon is successful and it starts getting some industry buzz going, you might see Microsoft starting to nudge more partners in the direction of ARM chips, especially if Windows can focus on a few specific key tasks that ARM could do perhaps better than a more generalized chip. And I think that's going to be the impact that we'll see of Apple Silicon over the next couple of years. So keep an eye on the Snapdragons because this could be yet another new direction for PCs that might be driven by Apple, which will in turn drive future competition from Intel and AMD who might have to start making simplified processors to uh, match what might be happening on the Qualcomm side. So it's going to be great. We're going to have lots of choices. We're going to see a lot of cool new performance gains. We're going to see little PCs do things they couldn't do before. And I'm excited to be a product reviewer so I can test all this stuff and share them with all of you. Now, I'd love to know what you think about this. Let me know in the comments section. Will Apple Silicon be a game changer for the PC industry or just another thing? Uh, we will find out soon enough and I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Now this week's wrap up of course is being brought to you by all of you. We had a couple of super chatters on our live stream this week. They included Mark Dell and Next Level Tech. We also had some new supporters on the channel who signed up via the YouTube membership program. They include, I hope I get your name right here, Jason Kuzej, David Dougherty, and Bob Boyson. I want to thank you all for your support of the channel this week and everyone who's been supporting the channel on an ongoing basis. I also want to thank everyone who watches on a regular basis too because all of those things equal channel growth. And if you want to support the channel, you can. You can go to lon.tv support and make a monthly or a one-time contribution through our donor box page. We also support the YouTube membership program where you can click that join button down below and get some cool loyalty badges next to your name. And we also recently popped up on Floatplane and 13 of you have already subscribed over there. So thank you very much for that. It's been fun being a part of that community as well. And I will be popping up anywhere I can now that I have such a fast upload speed. It doesn't take all that long to get my content distributed. Uh, now this week was a little bit of a slow week from a live stream perspective, but we did have a live stream when I got in that new Tiger Lake PC. So you can see the full uh, length of that testing session, or you could just see the review of it. Uh, the Extras channel had nothing this week, but I do have some stuff going up tomorrow, which I think you'll like. And then on the main channel, of course, we had the review of the XPS 13. We had my review of the new iPhone 12 Pro with that uh, new Apple chip inside. And we did a video on Plex playback troubleshooting. 
uh, because I get a lot of questions and comments coming in throughout the course of the month, and it's always good to try to consolidate what I'm hearing from people into a video that might be helpful to some. And what I've been noticing over the last year or so is that people are transitioning over to more advanced video compression technologies like HEVC because you can fit a very high quality file into a much smaller file size, and that of course is very attractive to people. The problem is though is that if you have an older Intel processor, it can't efficiently decode that HEVC video in hardware. So even though you've got a hardware transcoding capable PC, it might not be able to handle the newer HEVC video formats because it's not a newer chip that has those optimizations in hardware. So that is a big cause of a lot of performance issues for many, but we also look at network issues and other things that you might encounter. So definitely check out that video. Uh, now this week, here's what I plan to do, although these plans are subject to change based on what comes in through the door. So uh, the first thing we're going to take a look at hopefully is this new cheap laptop from Jumper. It's like 249 bucks. It runs Windows 10. Uh, they often look better than they actually are in person. I have yet to take it out of the box, although Jake has been working on it this week. So I'm going to do uh, some evaluative work on that and get you a video hopefully up in the next day or two. So be on the lookout for that one. I also got in two new products from Roku, their new Ultra and their new Stream Bar. And I know a lot of you love the Roku platform, as do I. So we'll take a look and see what's new with the Ultra this year. I think it's just more of a, of a performance bump and the addition of Dolby Vision over the prior one. Uh, I'm hoping to get to the Quest 2 this week as well, although I'm not optimistic just given how much other stuff I've got to work on. Uh, but we will do some game capture in the next coming weeks and we'll do some live streaming when we do that. So be on the lookout for that. And I really do want to get something in about how I'm using the Apple Watch. I'm about two or three weeks into my Apple Watch Series 6 now. I've got a good idea of what I want to talk about uh, related to the watch and all of its new health sensors. So be on the lookout for that. And I'm sure we'll get some other stuff in just because things are just coming in like crazy over the last, over the last couple of weeks. Now, if you want to uh, be notified every time we go live or do anything else on this channel, you can click the bell and then you will get a notification pushed out to you. So uh, that's something you should definitely do so you don't miss any of those live streams. We have a lot of different places you can find me. The two newest ones are Floatplane, uh, which you can find at lon.tv slash floatplane. And then of course, we've got my Amazon profile at lon.tv slash Amazon shop, where you can find my videos there now, along with live streams and a whole bunch of other stuff. So I'm building out a presence on Floatplane and Amazon. So follow me in both places if you don't mind. Uh, and then of course, we've got my email list, which I will uh, send you some things out to occasionally, very occasionally. So that's one thing you can do. Uh, the Facebook group is another great place to interact with me and other viewers of the show. So definitely sign up there. I think we're close to about a thousand people there. And then we have my store that you can find at lon.tv slash store where you can buy previously used items that we've reviewed here on the channel. There's only one of everything though. So if you want to get notified whenever something goes up, uh, hit the store alert email list here to get that notification. And that is going to do it for this week's weekly wrap up. Please don't forget to cast your vote if you are here in the United States. We have our big federal election on Tuesday, November 3rd. I have cast my ballot already and dropped it off in the drop box. And it's a good thing that I did because uh, my seven-year-old is now quarantined for 14 days after coming into contact with somebody with COVID-19. Thankfully, the person she came in contact with is doing fine. We, knock on wood, have no symptoms here. Everybody was masked at the time of the contact, but I will be hunkered down here for the next two weeks, which might mean a few extra videos, perhaps, uh, given I don't have to go anywhere or pick anybody up. So uh, stay tuned. I will see you very soon on a live stream. Thankfully, everyone's okay, and I'll keep you posted if anything changes there, but I think we'll be just fine. Thank you all for your support and continued viewership, and we'll see you very soon. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Tom Albrecht, Chris Allegretta, Mike Patterson, and Bill Pomerantz. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more.
And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv s.